welcome, 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 rugby league oh, fans. Don't you mean what is up, kangaroo chasers? What? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> what's who's, going who's, on, man? Whose show is this? Is this my show oh, or your show? Dude, this is your show. <laughs> I am just great. <laughs> I am grateful, grateful to be here with the Ray Warren of rugby, American rugby league himself. <laughs> like this is just <laughs> such a moment for me. Um, you don't understand. It's amazing. Right. The Ray Warren. Yeah. Don Carboni, the the illustrious Don Carboni of international rugby league known throughout the world on on my podcast. Or look at I, 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 I mean, we're on your channel, so that's the whole how does this work? Who whose channel no, what, is it really? <laughs> look, it's it's our it's our channel. You've been carrying the channel for the last year. Without, with whilst I've been kind of, I guess, on hiatus or on holidays, and and the term Don Carboni, I mean, I'm called Carbs, I'm I'm called Mike, uh, but Don Carboni is synonymous with the American fans. <laughs> so any American listeners of Chasing Kangaroos, Don I'll, Carboni. So I love it. I'll call, everybody calls you Don Carboni. It's it's the Godfather reference. I mean, we have to. Like, you know, I think I want to say it was. Jim, that started calling you Don Carboni, or maybe it was both a combination of he and I, like off, you know, not recording. We're like, oh, we gotta talk to Don Carboni. I'm like, wait, I don't know, maybe not. I don't know. It's it's been so. I long. I don't know how it happened. It's a little bit stereotypical, but what? <laughs> hey, I love it. That's it's okay. fantastic. Listen, like, wait, I've got I've got Italian family. We know how it works. <laughs> What's going on, brother? You doing good? It's nice. Man, it's doing... nice to hear you back on the airwaves again. I just want to point that out. Look, there's been, I think when I, um, look, I think I took about a year off and things were just getting really negative in the international rugby league world. There was a lot of hate amongst fans yeah. and friends and, and um, you know, we had things like World Cups being cancelled and postponed and all sorts of things happening. Um, so I just needed to step aside, step away. I, it wasn't fun doing this anymore, um, but i got to say, the lead up to Vegas, um, things have just been fun again. So I just thought, you know what, I'm going to try it a little bit differently. So the, the format has been different for anyone that has been listening to the Facebook Lives, which I now release uh, on the channel, Chasing Kangaroos Live. Um, and I've been having a lot of fun doing it. So let's let's keep going for as long as it's fun and um, keep building this international rugby league community. Oh, I thought it was great because I want to say it was like the week of Vegas, like maybe like a, a couple, like two or three days after I get a notification. This is, you know, because on, on my phone, I want to make sure that, you know, our episodes drop and when they drop, we can post and social media and stuff. And I get a notification that yeah. says your episode is, is now live. And I went, what the hell? Huh? Huh? What the, <laughs> who the hell's recording? I mean, because I think because you did the the Facebook live at nighttime, like like my nighttime, like three o'clock in the morning, which. It's not happening for me, and so I was like, "Well, I'm not joining that." <laughs> but then, yeah. but then I saw it later, and it's like JC, you know, JC Kangaroos was live. I was like, "Oh shit, Carbs is back! Carbs is back!" And I wanted to run like through the streets and yelling back. <laughs> I'm glad you were excited, man. Um, but and and was that's that what I'm trying ones? to do. <laughs> no, look, I had I, man, I've had look. I'm not going to say there are thousands of screaming fans, but I have yeah. had a lot of love, and the the whole for the whole um sort of year that I was off, every like couple of days there'd be someone reaching out and saying hey when he's doing this again or what's going on right. or where have you been or are you coming back and I was um not not surprised by the love the community the chasing kangaroos family has always been amazing and you would see it as well with the rugby league in America family like such a great group of people the the community keeps growing and and there's no more passionate international rugby league fans so um but just to hear people, you know, I started off with a few little TikToks and Instagram reels and, oh, yeah. you know, oh, that's some, right. you, yeah, yeah, I remember that. The, some of the comments are just like, oh man, just great to hear you again. And there was a lot of DMs yeah. happening and um, it was really nice. So it's good to, it is good to be back. I'm, I'm recording, I'm trying to record Facebook lives every Monday at 8.15 PM Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time for the next couple of weeks. It'll be back to normal time soon. Um, and the whole point of that is, look, it's probably going to be mostly me talking to myself, but if I can do it in a Facebook live format, then listeners can jump on, ask questions, be a part of it. I can sound like I'm having a conversation and then I can rip that audio straight onto the podcast and anyone 
yourself instead of getting up at three o'clock in the morning, Dustin, you can get you can jump on and listen to it on your on your way or driving to the gym or whatever whatever you're doing in the morning, going for a jog, mate. So it's uh, it's awesome fun. You're, you're making it sound like I need to go to the gym and get in shape and stuff again. But I <laughs> I just I just know that, mate. You could have been playing Masters at Vegas. You should have. You're fit enough, and um, <laughs> mate, I, I know I'm you playing, I know you're keeping active. I played Masters at Vegas. I was calling uh, the championship game. Well, let's see. Masters started at 3:45 Vegas time, so that was just getting. That was the women's championship game, you know, the All Canada final, and then it was the uh, the game between Roots and the Immortals. Which man, what a what a game! Like those were. How was the call, man? Because you your your voice must have disappeared by the end. You were calling for like two days straight. It was awful because then by the by the time okay, so I wouldn't say um off awful in the sense that like day one was pretty bad uh i had some great people who who really helped out we had uh, we had quote unquote volunteers who decided not to volunteer and not tell me uh, so from oh. the, from a from a streaming perspective the the original goal was to do all three fields right and we'd have a camera on one we had an internet connection with um uh, what do they call it? With like a DJ, a DJI, and it would just it, yep. it auto tracks. So we'd set it to track each game, the referee, and it would just follow the referee wherever we went because that would give you the best sense of. That's like, very cool. Yeah. So we we got up there, we started working on it, and for like this was our field two camera. So for some reason on field two, it just like it wouldn't connect to YouTube, like it would only record but it wouldn't connect to our, our YouTube live stream and we couldn't figure out how to get it to work. Like we tried, oh my God, we tried so long to try to get it to work, but we also had three other field or two other fields to set up. Our field two camera <clears throat> wouldn't, like we couldn't get it to, we couldn't one, we couldn't get someone to man the camera to turn it left and right because, you know, it's too hard for people to volunteer to do that. But we, you know, <laughs> especially when they don't show up and then, you know, but we we were trying to get it to work and just record left to right to do that. And we had it hooked up to someone's cell phone and a computer so we could do it that way. Couldn't get that camera to work either. Don't know what happened. Um, again, this was done on zero budget. So everybody that was like, oh, the quality's bad and everything else bad is like, you wouldn't have gotten it if we weren't there. Like, didn't really get paid to do it. We got no budget. Like, we're just piecemealing like cameras and stuff together. So that's that's what left us on our... I quote our field one camera, which is our like the main. It's the championship field. It was the nicest one. We had like snow capped mountains in the background, and you know all the cars passing by too. But that was still. Um, but that was it was good. I mean, from the grand scheme of things, you know, we had some issues. I mean, we were streaming to. We we streamed from my basically from my phone is what we were using mm -hmm. to the NRL headquarters, and the NRL headquarters are splitting it off to run back to rugby league in America and. We we're doing the stream key to run to the NRL YouTube channel as well. So, from the logistics standpoint, it was absolutely insanity. Uh, we finally figured out our camera issues on day two, but yeah. You know, but from an audio from recording, I had some people come in and step up, and you know that we had Chad Cooper who works with PCRL. He did some great stuff. Um, oh, I just forgot his name too who works with Cleveland Rugby League, who you're, you're wearing right now. Um, not Monty. Uh, no, it was not Monty. Uh, it was, oh, God, man, I feel so bad. It's This is the early morning brain for me right now. By the way, it's late for carbs and early for me, so that's why we're, this is the only way we could record this. <laughs> um, I can't remember his name. Um, I'll I'll say in the comments later, but um, but yeah, big thanks to him because he operated camera. He came in, stepped up in some calls because we didn't even have camera operators. Like we were just trying to pull people every every match. The first camera operator of the nines of the first match for the nines, legendary writer Rad Walter. Oh, that's awesome! He, I'm glad. He, he, he so was, you got you got to meet Brad in real life. That's oh, great. Oh yeah, Brad. Brad and I. Yeah, he's like, a top player. Brad and Steve Mascord and everybody else was there. Like they were great because they were out there involved, talking to people. I mean, the, the nines was fantastic. We had the 32, 31 teams. We unfortunately had one team or two teams drop out, um, and maybe regretted going over to the LA Sevens, but that's a whole other story. But. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was great. I mean, you know, we had two days of exciting rugby league and then, you know, the international match. But yeah, my voice. Oh, yeah. Peter Jolly. That was another one who 
who yeah. also helped out. He was, I mean, to have calls like that. Then day two, we had Paul Gallen and then, you know, Fatty Vaught. And, oh, you know, that, like, like that, that was, guy. <laughs> you know, like, you know, whatever. America's you know, Paul Vorden hanging around. Right. Whatever. Yeah, just calling a match. Calling the kind of women's, was it women's quarterfinal? I think, yeah, it was a women's quarterfinal between, I, I think it was quarterfinal match. So not only did he men- call rugby league, he called women's rugby league nines. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome, man. And hats off to you, man. You did an incredible job. You pulled it together. Um, and I'm sure there's things you do next time or improve on next time. But I, I'm glad because <laughs> you. To you do it. <laughs> but, well, but even like sh- like shouldn't and we can talk a little bit about this. But shouldn't the NRL sort of help out a little bit? Yeah. You know, and and and, and I think they I think they didn't know what to expect. I think when they yeah. first when when Volandis and Abdo first announced Vegas it was all about gambling money and blah 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 blah. I don't think they realise that there is. I know it's not a massive rugby league community, but there is a good rugby league community on the ground there, right? So there's there's there would have been I mean, I heard there was, you know, close to a thousand people at the nines and at the, or at the oh, international, at right? Yeah. yeah. So man, and a lot of those would have been, you know, families and friends of the players like the That's American fine. like American rugby league community, because a lot of the Aussies would have been on the strip doing whatever the NRL event was at the time, you know. So the American rugby league community is there. I don't think Volandis and Abdo realise that that existed already yeah. to a degree, right? And I think towards the end, it was only towards the end leading up to the event that they started talking about, hey, maybe there's some Americans here watching, you know, maybe mm-hmm. there's some Americans in the crowd. Um, oh, definitely. And you, definitely. Yeah. So, so I think that, you know, that was just like they didn't even consider like, hey, you know, there's going to be a US versus Canada match. Hey, there's gonna, the nines is going to be something kind of special. So I would, like to, I would like to think that next year they put some resources behind it and help you out, man, because you, you deserve it. You put in the hard yards and you put your money where your mouth is, man, because I know back in the day when it was you and Jimmy – always bagging out every <laughs> like team that couldn't get a stream happening and it's like you know what here we go two days worth of streaming yes there were fuck ups yes there were hiccups but mate we got to watch it and, also, and that was incredible man also we had live like graphic <clears throat> excuse me we had live like graphic overlays we the the go- the original goal so i can tell you like this is what happened when we were talking with you know the guys putting on the nines tournament and yes there was limited this was i mean what, I, what I've told people in, you know, interviews and stuff and other Aussie and Kiwi radio stations that I've been on, I said, this was a litmus test, you know, not just, not just Vegas and not just the nines, but the entire thing was a really a litmus test. Like, okay, can this really work? And yeah. from, from a nines perspective, oh, absolutely. People had a great time. Everybody was coming up and saying, hey, you know, what's going on? And, you know, they're, they're, people were excited just to be out there playing right you know two days of nines is fantastic and it was you know wonderful to see you know to to put all this like where you said like on zero but yeah jim and i like we bash bash teams all the time that put together shat streams um you know all we did we had a riser and a camera and we hooked it up to my computer and like we'll we'll, i'll post the photos and stuff like people have posted like that's all it was it was just a power outlet and running off my my cell phone company messaged me like what is it 10 o'clock in the morning on Friday and it was like, you are at 98% of your total. And I'm like, oh no. Like, you may see reduction in stream qual- in, in streaming quality. I was like, like oh no. shit. I was like, not at 10 o'clock in the morning. And then I get another warning. They're like, you, you've you used this much data. And I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> so there you go. You need a telco sponsor for next year. That's, yeah, you know right. what I mean? You, just need, I you need a few, there's just a few little things. Yeah. Well, and, and I think, you know, you had it right. Like, you talked about the you know, just kind of testing things out. Like you had so many fans and people from there are thousands of people who were watching it. I don't know what the total, I'll go back and look at the total reports, but you know, I know on our channel alone, we had four, like three or 4,000 people total, like watching like total streams. Like that's not continuous. It would be amazing if it was, um, but you know, it doesn't, <clears throat> it doesn't take much, you know, you just have to find, you know, a, a decent camera, just like we always had a decent camera. And it, or an iPhone on a tripod. I mean, that's the that's the best thing. Like, if you can get that, you're going to be good to go for the most part. Um, and that's it, man. And th- there's a proof of concept now. Right. Like the nines will <clears throat> grow. Um, I have no doubt that USA and Canada will happen again as well next year. Yeah. They're already talking about it. They're going to make it happen. And I mean, it was a 16-16 tie. You like you can't end it. How good? Tie. Yeah, right. How how good? But you know, up in the broadcast, booth, up in the broadcast booth, we were like, um, 
we going Golden Point? Or like we're looking around, like, yeah, nobody, nobody knew. And then, <laughs> and then uh, Cody Cluxford, who was the uh, the official for the day, just called full time and went, well, that's the end. <laughs> it was a bit anticlimactic. I mean, not anticlimactic in the sense that, like, you know, the end was very climactic because they were. You know, we're, we're just not used to it ending in a draw. Yeah, know, like, that's right. Yeah. I guess I guess we draw. And they're like, oh, okay, thanks everybody for joining us on the stream. So, uh, no, it's all right though. So, all good. And how was how was Vegas itself? How were the two two matches? I mean, I saw I saw you guys having a, a great time at the bar slash your seats. Um, <laughs> at the night. It looked like, man, seats. man, what a what a great stadium. I just had FOMO the whole time because it was just like my all of my feeds were just people. And a lot of people that I knew from over there that, you know, people that I haven't met or met in real life, and they're all just there having a great time. And it looked amazing, man. It looked like a lot of fun. Here's the great thing. Like, if you think about it, like, so my, what I did is, you know, I don't, I, I live in North Carolina, right? There's no rugby league around me. Like, none. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, Carolina Storm, like, we, they started, and, you know, we really didn't, they didn't really take off, and they kind of got the men's to play both union and league a little bit, but not not much. There's there's no rugby league around me. I was in Texas before where there was no rugby league around me, and in the Midwest where there's no rugby league around me. So this was the first time that I met in person everybody in rugby league. Yeah, wow. I, I mean, and that's that was you know even other people were like you know well, I'd never met this person. I've only seen him on Zoom. I'm like it's because it's the how big the country is, right? Like, and so it would be you know all the people I'm like oh yeah you've never met so and so and it's like not in person like social media, phone calls, Zoom calls, whatever. Like that's how I've met 98% of everybody that we've worked with. Lance, you know, who has been on the podcast, who's on the podcast regularly, who is, you know, he called the matches with me. He was in the the, the nightclub with me. Slash. Well, that was the first time you met Lance in real time, life. The first time Lance and I had ever met in real life. <clears throat> that's insane, man. Right? Like it's just, it, it, some people are like, no, there's no way. It's like, yeah, first time. Was um was Nate Gladden hanging around? Was he around? Oh, or? I was in contact with Mr. Nate Gladden. He was not in Vegas, but he was around. Uh, we did have a chat um before, and I said I sent it. You know, I sent him a photo and said that you know, wish you were here. And I I messaged him a few days prior, and I said any chance that you, you may get a last minute flight to Vegas, and he's like, no, nah, I can't. So he's living the mountain man, man life up in uh, up in Wyoming, Wyoming, and so. Yeah, they've got they've actually got a beautiful property if you ever see uh, Kate's social media. But Nate, you know, he's been kind of off the radar a little bit, but he's like, next year, next year I'll be there. He's like, maybe the Dragons will come play. And I was like, probably not, but come next year anyway. <laughs> Who knows, man? It's hard to know. I, look, I just hope they announce it soon. I think that's important yeah, as well. Yeah, like whoever the clubs are, let the fans start saving. Maybe we put together some chasing kangaroos slash rugby league in America packages and get, you know, a few hundred oh, that, people over there. That'd be fantastic. Um, and if that's the case, I'll have to come. But if the dragons were there, man, dragons and para, let's get them both there because that'll be freaking awesome. I, I, I've heard, I've heard whispers like people are talking about, like, oh, the top contenders for next year are what, what was it? One said the Melbourne Storm, which I met their CEO and he was a very nice lad. Um, and I, th- I can see them like because they've got a pretty good follow. The Storm have a pretty good following, so especially here in the U.S., from what I understand. Um, and then I think. Oh, who was the other one that somebody said recently? Oh, Would have been Warriors. Panthers. Yeah, Panthers. Other oh, Warriors too. Yeah. Pa- Warriors, Panthers. Panthers and Panthers Storm expressed interest. Um, the Warriors just makes a lot of sense because they are cranking at the moment, like three sellouts in their first games this year already. Um, oh, the whole they even went man, to the as, South Island and sold out the South Island, dude. <laughs> they're, they're, there's just a real love for the Warriors in New Zealand at the moment. We just keep hearing about it. So you know, you're, you're adding another five, ten thousand fans. Or, oh, maybe I'm exaggerating because I'm so excited about it. But you're definitely adding some some bums on I seats. I mean, I don't think I don't think five to five to ten thousand is an exaggeration. I mean, just you, you look at the th- at the event in in total. I mean, forty thousand fans were there. 40, and you, because mate, you were critical, man, because you were like, man, they're not even going to get twenty thousand, twenty five, and then all of a sudden, it's like, hold say, on, no, man. I, no, I, <laughs> maybe, no, you were. I, come I, on, let's I, be honest. I was a little bit. So at the beginning, I was a little bit critical, but I said, but I, I do remember this because I said, I, you know, I would deem success at getting twenty thousand fans, twenty five thousand fans, sell out a quarter of the Death Star. And that's and that's honestly, that's what I said, or you know, a third of the Death Star. I'd say, um, I felt like. 
be at the beginning it was rough going from a marketing you know you and i are in marketing we know how it goes it yeah. was rough going i was like okay you've got this event like what else are you like what are you planning to do leading up to it and i think that was that's and i'll still say it, it was a miss in some parts you know all, yeah. e all the way up to december and even the december launch was a was a bit of an issue too like it was you know to have something so massive and have this very 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 slow rollout and slow like Oh yeah, we're gonna go to Vegas, and that's like like you said before. Like all you heard was like, "Oh, gambling revenue," like, and then they're like, "Okay." Then they get to like December, and they're like, "Oh yeah, ticket sales are going up a little bit. Like people are excited. Maybe we can. Maybe it'll be a little bit more." And then like January, much bigger. And I, we wrote about it. All right, I wrote about it in the um in Rugby League in America Volume Two of of our magazine. Um, but it was it was really interesting because. After January, then that's when you started seeing like the Russell Crowe video and yeah. you know, UFC and all these all these things that happened. I was like, if you would have started sooner, yeah, you, you would have got. And, and you know, people complained like, oh, no one advertised. I mean, uh, Jimmy, our man, he he is he's well, not on Twitter. He's on Facebook and he's very active. Um, got to get him back on. But get Jimmy back. I miss Jimmy. I know I, you're listening, I, brother. I, I know. I know he's listening. Jimmy from Boston. From Boston. He, our, our favorite mass hole. <laughs> I feel like I feel like there was a little bit of hype in the le in the week leading up. Like I saw some like there was a local TV coverage and stuff like that, perhaps. But they just they didn't do much. And yeah. look, to be, to be honest, the NRL doesn't market that well in Australia. Like they do. <laughs> like it sounds ridiculous because it's the biggest sport in Australia, right? But um, shut up, AFL fans! It is. But um, let's get rid of your AFL fans are just now. But oh, but yeah. <laughs> but they, there's there's a lot we can learn from from you guys and your big sports. That's for sure. But there's also this whole like, yeah, we knew it was happening, but you know, rugby league being rugby league, it's like maybe like something ridiculous will happen and it it won't actually go ahead. There was always this feeling that it always, might not go ahead. Always that negativity. Of yeah. But well, well you're, for you're, obvious you're reasons, reading it man. Before we started getting on this podcast, even after the the fact that it was a Dude, great event, <laughs> that's the thing, right? But so, but um, but the vi once it happened, there's been this feeling, especially in the Australian rugby league community, like in media, that like we can do anything now as a sport. Like so, so I I think maybe there was some hesitation because they're like, oh, okay what if it doesn't work or what if it something happens and it doesn't go ahead and they, you know because like that russell crowe video was freaking awesome but did it get played anywhere outside of like australian rugby league social media like was it like it didn't it wasn't on tv for you guys it wasn't no. anywhere for you guys i think the um <clears throat> i i interviewed some some youtube reaction got reaction video guys um actually last night and that episode will probably come out after this one super great and all they saw was like somebody sent them hey you should react to this video and i was like oh cool and they became fans and they all went to the game and like they're yeah like, so, and they're and and that that so in that sense it didn't make it it didn't make it to the mainstream and 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 i think one of the biggest misses so and i, I want to hear how it is on, on your end too right but i think one of the biggest misses that we had from this event <clears throat> was the an advertisement the week before or two weeks before the super bowl you had the what is it the afc final um anyway it was <clears throat> excuse me <coughs> nothing worse than trying to cough while you're recording a podcast um the you had the final between the san francisco 49ers is the semifinals 49ers and the detroit lions it was one of the most watched games ever in in american football um, you know, for a, from a playoff standpoint, it was on Fox. Just one advertisement on an NFL game, not the Super Bowl, because the Super Bowl advertisement is a terrible idea. Seven million dollars for 30, seven mil, seven mil for no, thirty seconds. That's, that's that's stupid. That's almost that's like <laughs> half an NRL club for a season. Right. So we're not doing that. Right. But an advertisement on regular, like it, it doesn't even have to be. Like, you can. Do what would that be one. worth? What What would a spot be worth on for, on not regular Fox for a game like that? Well, see, this was regular Fox, but it was a regular, but it was a, a playoff game. So, you know, 10, maybe, 10, 10,000, maybe. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I honestly don't know what it would be. It, not a yeah. lot. Like in comparison, 
pennies to what a you know what a, a Super Bowl would bring, because what what it would have done is it would have said, hey, we're on Fox Sports One coming up. Lost, you know, all you have to do is like promote the sport, like, and, and I think you can do the Russell Crowe. This is football, just not as you know it. Big hits, yeah. You know, NRL, Las Vegas, you know, March. The video was per- the video was perfect. Like yeah. honestly, you can't like the way the the script, just the fact that it's Russell Crowe, the hits. I mean. He he mentioned no pads, no helmets, but it wasn't in a cringy yeah. sort of way that we hate. You know I what I mean? Hate. So, and it's, yeah. I've said it from the get go. It's like that is it has the, the he did no it well. Pads, no helmet, no yeah. no fear, whatever. I was like, please, like don't use that. Like American audiences hate that. Like they'll see that there's no pads and no helmets. Like yeah, you see it it's obvious, the- right? Yeah, you guys are fucking crazy. We get it. We see it. Yeah, but right. The, I mean, us. You. That's what you're saying to us. I'm not saying that to you. But um, <laughs> I, I think we're, we're that, crazy yeah, too. So that's it. The ad would have been fine, but I think we should have had, like, and I know whatever you need to engage to get Russell Crowe more involved, but he should have been like on a circ, on like a media circuit as if he was promoting a new movie. Like, he should have been on like Jimmy Fallon. He was, and he like, was, what it, but he was out filming a new movie, which is why he couldn't. Well, uh, yeah, that, I know, okay, that sucks. fair <laughs> enough. But can <laughs> we, know, can we plan it, it better for next time? Right. Can we plan it better for next time? Cause like, if he's doing that, then they're showing the video. And then maybe you're getting some pl- X, I would get some X players across. Some of the players that 100%. came across and, you know, Aaron Woods and those guys, like, okay, fair enough. But, Maybe like let's think about like some more outrageous personalities. Like I was listening to like Willie Mason recently, and love or hate him, like I feel like American sport fans would really dig his vibe. 100%. So if you had guys like yeah, if you had guys like Big Willie, like I can just imagine like the the Fox commentator being like, uh, so they call you Big Willie over there. Like like it just would have been fun. Like I don't know, yeah, right. it would have been like, and I'm sure there's a few others like him, right? Just let's get like a bit of a circuit going, talk about it, show the Russell Crowe video. They can reuse that Russell Crowe video oh my God. next every year, year with, with new footage, right? Just cut some new footage yeah. every time. And um, just get that hype going, man. I, I just, I and I hope, that's why we just need to be planned and organized. Let's, let's, let's announce the four teams or the four clubs ASAP and let's start planning this shit. Let's make sure Rusty doesn't have a movie on next March so that he can jump on the circuit. <laughs> well, it has and, to happen. And, and I think you know this is is part of this is part of this um, this content generation thing that I think that NRL has a, a couple of issues with and being able to like reach that broader audience. Right? Is that you know the they had NFL players at the game, you know, on the field, and they're like, great. But what did they do? outside of that did they post yeah. did they like did they share were they part of like content sharing for for their social media fans and it wasn't even like the top nfl players like they're good they're good but are they the top ones nah and it's, it's most people wouldn't know who they were if they're walking by in the first place just like most american fans who were or most american you know uh, vegas people didn't know reese walsh as he walked by or latrell mitchell as they walked by and everybody yeah. else is going yeah <gasps> <laughs> yeah shocked and all face but you know but you're right like i think and, and this is where i go back to saying like this was a litmus test to see if it could be done right if this is if this is a viable thing i think as soon as you walked in as soon as they started saying everybody's like oh it's like you know 30 well it's like eight, fifteen thousand australians that's fine like fifteen thousand australians five that's 000, brilliant five thousand you know five thousand brits came over in in you know, and their packages or whatever, that leaves 20,000 people still. Yes, some are expats that live here in the U.S., but not all of them. <clears throat> you have... What do you think What What do you think the breakdown was with that 20,000? Uh, like I know you, I know. there's no way of knowing, but like, no. what do you, what do you feel? I mean, I would probably say 70, 30, 70% probably, but I don't know. Like 70% could, American or 70% expat? Uh, I think seventy. I don't know. Maybe it's like sixty forty percent expat versus American. Yeah, that's still I, I, decent, man. <clears throat> yeah, right. Because like forty forty percent of twenty thousand, eight thousand. Is yeah, that right? I think eight thousand. <laughs> it's it's late. It's that's early. pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good, man. But, I, I mean, but we we won't know that, right? But what I can what I can tell you is, it even even like I saw some people posting and says I didn't even you know as they're like I'm an Aussie and I haven't seen an NRL match in forever. I'm just gonna go. 
you know why not yeah. why not you know it felt like being in I said felt like being in Australia for a day um but I, I think you know if, if we're really looking at stuff and, and what's going on and you know all the other kind of bells and whistles that went around it it was a, it was six six it's it's a success Forty thousand people to show up, you know. I think surpassed everybody's expectations. I never ever expected a sellout ever. Like no, I mean, no I, one I, did. No one. I mean, the, it, everybody's like, "Oh, you don't," you know. You know, look at all the empty seats at the top. I was like, "Yeah, they didn't sell those empty seats. They actually only opened up the three hundred level, the pe- the last three weeks of of the uh, be leading up to the to the matches themselves." And, and yeah, you had some in the middle. You didn't have any, you know, in the 400 level, which is the very, very top, which is like, what? You know, they don't need that. But everything in the bottom two, three area, within two areas were full. I mean, packed to the brim. And so, man, I would have been, I would have been happy with 25k. Yeah, that's what I said. Right, so that, four, that, yeah. That's what I said beginning. Like, you know, if I'm saying like, what's a success look like for me? 25k would have been success. Yeah, but like, so now next time we got to get 60. You know what I mean? We've got to get. We got now. We know now. We've got let's, like let's a start, pretty let's high start with 55. bar. Let's, start, let's go let's, fifty-five. Let's, let's 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 keep like six. Again, I'm down with fifty-five. Six, Sixty-four thousand three hundred and eighty-two is what. It's a, that's a weird. It's such a. Weird oh, is that number. the capacity? Yeah, sixty-four. That's the capacity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, let's go to fifty next time. Then. Yeah, let's right. let's go to fifty. But like, there's no reason why if we're doing this for five years <clears> at least, then there's no reason why we're not selling it out at the end. No. Um. And who knows what else is happening in and around it? I, I think the NRL needs to get behind, like I said, the nines with you guys and and the international match with you guys as well, because it just makes so much sense, right? Like, yeah. um, I th- we're going to see. So, like, do you think? Do you think the? Do you think the not? Do you think the event as well? Sorry, I'm jumping on tangents all over the place, but we we've <laughs> That's seen what that happens and, when and, you and, and I jump on our but first actually, recording ever, by the way. Well, this well, this is your show, right? And I'm asking you questions. <laughs> Uh, which is, um, I'm sure that's fine. That's fine. fine. I'm used to do it the other way around so much. It's nice. Yeah, to you're probably like, hey, you know, look, you didn't tell me what we're going to talk about tonight. I don't know, so I'm not, I'm not prepared. I'm just, we're just going to chat. We but didn't, um, we didn't have a plan to begin with. So we had no plan. <laughs> we There's said, hey, never a plan. That's... <laughs> <laughs> so, but we saw, we've seen a couple of like clubs, like there's that um, Brooklyn. Is it the Brook, the, the New the York Queens. Women's Club, yeah, the, the Queens? Queens yeah. yeah. So they've sort of popped up out of because of the nines and like there's a few there's a bit of talk about others as well the community's growing because of it and and that can only be the beginning right like that to me is like the best well, it's probably the second best part out of it all i'll tell you what the first best part is in a moment but the second best part is just seeing new clubs spring up and and interested people you know like union players that are going hey i'm going to try this or yeah. like just people that played other sports just went hey this is um this isn't bad. I don't mind this. I want to give it a shot. I want to keep watching it. Like that to me was really cool. Yeah. I, th- I think so. If we're talking like you want to give this a shot, want to watch this, I, th- you know, there's so many, you know, uh, here, here you know, obviously you have a lot, it's a union stronghold here in the U S hundred percent. Um, and, and you're always going to have those, those props and hookers and union who are, who don't, who are going to miss their scrum downs, which is pretty much, the only thing that's that, fine i was like that's that's fine you can do that i said but i can't tell you the number of people who have reached out and said where is there a team in texas where is there yeah. wh- why can't i get why can't i get rugby league in st louis where is a you know where is i'm in michigan what can i do i mean like people reached out to us and you know reached out to the usarl as well you know just kind of like where can we get involved and not just that it's like Okay, Arizona. One one guy even said, "Well, I guess I need to get my coaching certification, and maybe I should start with a youth league here and get a youth league organized." Like, and it's actively work, like trying to work with the PCRO to get a youth league in Arizona. Like, isn't that started. brilliant? Yeah, I saw. Was that on? I saw that conversation start on Twitter yeah, so or it, X or whatever you want to call it. it. it started, is that the one? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I, I commented on it. Um, he's like, "Is there something in, in Arizona?" I said, "There's not, but you might. You you could start." And, and I think uh, Ben Cavalry from the uh, Barracudas reached out, and I was like, you know, get involved with PCR. And he reached out to him, and I think they're having conversations about how to get coaching certifications. You know, incredible. I was man. like, the, yeah. And, and the number of people, the number of players too. You know, there are former Major League Rugby players, the union here in the U.S. Major League Rugby, um, which which is so confusing. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Let's not start on that one. That's no, another. No, no, episode. We don't. We don't. I don't even want to talk about that. It's just so weird. Um, there are union players like, Hey, I played for you know four years here. You know, I, you know, I live in St. Louis. 
how can I get involved in, you know, with the chance to potentially play for the national team? And, and like, I know, I know him as a player and he's a great winger, like great winger, great fullback. So I was like, okay, like, let's see how we work this out. And it, what it does is it builds the player base even more in the U S Yeah, and it, it provides the ability for us to like start building out these teams more and more and more and build out new locations and build out the domestic competition, which I think is one of the big, you know, the 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 board of directors we've 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 sat down and we've talked about you know okay what is our strategy and that's kind of some of the big things that we'll be releasing soon is like what's the strategy for growing the game here i just got done building a nine nine page marketing plan for usarl <laughs> and the Man, domestic can competition we, we need to dig into this can you what can you tell us here because i know oh yeah we'll talk about we'll announce it soon blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> like there's got to be some nuggets that uh, we can talk about now I, i'm not i didn't stay up late I don't to th- not talk about this with you. Listen, I don't think there's anything that's surprising. Like, if you were to say, what do you need to do to help grow rugby league in the U.S.? You could probably pick them up pretty quickly. Like, making sure we get all of our game stream. And this is just, these are just my proposals. Like, I think that, you know, making sure every team can get their game stream, making sure that we have, you know, an adequate website for match reports and, you know, scoring. Like, how great would it be to have a conference-by-conference conference scoring leader, like, to track you know, and, and, you know, create a player of the year, and, you know, for, you know, for USARL, you know, or, or just different things like that. Social media aspect, getting involved, not just content of, like, hey, here's a match score, or, you know, here's stuff with our sponsors, but also just making sure that we tell the stories of the players and the, and the men and women who are playing the game here in the U.S. Because that's what's going to draw people in, I think, um, is being able to tell a story and generate good content around that. Um, it's, it's a key thing from, from my perspective as we look at, like, what marketing needs to be in the U.S. for rugby league. And then, of course, you know, working on grassroots I mean, that's a, that's a, it's got to be a priority for us. One, it's part of, you know, trying to become a full member of the IRL so that we can qualify for the next World Cup is, you know, George Tupo and the, and the folks out at Utah Junior Rugby League, they're doing fantastic. They've got nines, they've yeah. got 13s planned. Like, that is great. But we need that in the Northeast. We need that in Boston and Brooklyn. And we need that in, in Jacksonville and other places. Like, it has to, you know, in California it's got to be everywhere it can't just be in, in one location um and so i think for for that like that's part of like a plan and of course i, I think working you know I, I put in there like continue to work with the nrl to build out what it what the height what the lead up to 2025 should be right it, it doesn't need to be it, it can't just be done in a silo. And I think the NRL learned that. I think a lot of the stuff that they did this past year was a silo. Like the Nines guys, they were great. They reached out to myself and and, and AD Cooney and some other, and others as well. Kind of like, hey, let's get your opinions, get your advice. You know, Mike Castle, you've had him on. Mike's a great guy. Um, yeah, Mike's awesome. And and so, yeah, like Matt O'Brien and Brad Donald, like they were all really great about, you know, communicating. Like, Here's here. What do we need here? Should we do this? Should we do this? And you know, to, and, and they, man, they ran a tight ship when it comes to running a nines tournament. Like everything was like on time, precision, and and good to go because that's, that's what they do. Like they're, they're yeah. like, oh yeah, we've got another tournament in a couple of weeks up coming up in Queensland. I'm like, oh, well, that's great. But I think from from a USAO perspective, like we're trying to just make sure that you know this new board is it's a bigger board than we've ever had before. You know, we're looking for independent. You know, there's some names that have submitted that I cannot tell you about because. I mean, we haven't voted on it yet, but there's some big names who have submitted to be an independent part of that one of those independent directors, which is great. Mm-hmm. I mean, technically, I am an independent director, but since I was voted on by or I was nominated by two different clubs, I'm now like part of like I, I'm not independent, like even though I'm not affiliated with any club. But yeah, I was gonna uh, say you're pretty independent. Pretty but independent, but it's fine. It's so good. Yeah, it, I think it pr- provides us a good opportunity to steer the right ship and do some interesting stuff in the coming years. And I think, I think you'll see that, you know, we, we've got a meeting coming up next week um, where we're going to go through quite a few things. And so start, you know, putting in things in place that will be good for, for the sport moving forward here. I love that despite you being nominated and, and elected to the board, you are continuing to record the podcast. And, and I think that's actually a critical piece because man, I want to know what's going on at these meetings, what you guys are doing, what you're working on. Like I want to hear about how the, the 
the cookie is made. You know what right. I'm saying? So, I'm, and I'm, I'm sure they're that. probably going to walk that fine line. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm, I have no doubt that there are people that are saying, "Nah, man, you can't, you shouldn't be doing the podcast." I have yeah. no doubt that that's happening. Oh, um, yeah, but I'm to sure. those people, to those people, like, get over it, man. Like, this needs to happen. Like, it's so important. Like, the the visibility is actually huge, and it's actually gonna, it's actually going to help. So, like, li- if you're listening, let this man speak as much as he needs to. Uh, so that's that's fantastic. What I love about what's been going on as well and what's happening now and because of Vegas and with the new board and et cetera, et cetera, is for the first time in a long time, there seems to be peace over there. So you've got PCRL, you've got the USARL South, even the United Rugby League guys, maybe it all seems to be coming back together. Um, you've got Utah You've got all these other places popping up. Everyone's friends again. And um, that's that's Acquaint- something that was well, uh, you know. <laughs> I'm wearing a cle- I'm wearing a cl- I'm wearing a, cl- wearing a Cleveland, Cleveland rugby league <laughs> jersey. I don't know if yourself and Monty are on good terms. I love both of you, but uh, um, but I'm sure we're not, there's we're not, a, we're not on cutthroat terms, we'll just say that. <laughs> well look, I'm wearing this for a reason, so hopefully I haven't, I haven't he sees it and he's any, in a while. Yeah. And he reaches out and says, bro, like, let's just make shit happen. But um, but there seems to be friendship again. And everyone is on, everyone just wants to grow the game over yeah. there. And that's what's beautiful. And even if it's not friendship, because it, it might not be friendship, because, I mean, there's still a lot of animosity, I'm sure. I mean, listen, with the whole NARL stuff, especially on the on the East Coast and the whole CRL and the PCRL stuff that happened, you know, um, you know, California Rugby League or Championship Rugby. Yeah, league. but all the Cali, all the Cali teams, bar one, are in the PCRL now, right? As Pretty of, much. As of today, yes. <laughs> as of today, what does that mean? Okay, wink, wink, for anyone well, listening. Is, <laughs> as, of, as of today, all but one. Uh, I don't think okay. it, yeah, because the Immortals have just joined uh, back with the PCRL. I believe it's uh, beautiful. Is, yeah. So I think you have two because there's the Young Tigers as well. So there's two that would left. Young Tigers. I, f- I always they'll, forget about they'll, they'll be back. But but this is what I'm saying. It's yeah, all right. it's all it's all there, man. It's all happening, and <laughs> and there's just more happening. We need to see more conferences pop up, and yeah. I just love that. Uh, Utah's a perfect model. You know, you've got your four main clubs at the top. You've got your youth coming through. I don't know how they've done it so quickly. Um, maybe they've got some more backing and support from like the Hopawade family and stuff like that, but that has happened quickly. They've got the whole like Pacific Island community oh, in yeah. Utah that really that also, is backing that, it as that well. That also helps too. You have a lot of Samoans and Tongans over there too. But uh, we, we just need to see more and more of that, man. Every 100%. like you know, and then and then build layers on top of that, and then the national team on top of that, and it's man, it's just fucking exciting, man. Yeah. It really is from so, afar, anyway. So thinking about this event, now I'm going to ask you questions. How about that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, uh, I'm running out of battery. Let me plug in. Give me one second. Let yeah, me plug in fine. and then you can ask me anything you want. Taking a small break here with uh, with Mr. Carboni. All right. No, you're good. Pl- plugged in or jacked in, as you might say. Jack- jacked in. Jacked in. If you look at this, so everybody's, we've seen a lot of good and, um, you know, we've seen some good press. We've seen some bad press around this. In the U.S., yep. there's, I don't know if it was covered much. And, you know, that's kind of part of the issue with the, the NRL um, and, the like, the promotion of it. So I don't know who here, besides the, the small, you know, the group of people that were there, the people that follow, how much it was promoted. So we can't, I don't want to really talk on that, but as far as your perspective and what the feeling is in Australia, you, know, you said you were, you were jealous. And I think that's a huge thing. Seeing everybody whose friends went over to yeah. Vegas were like, oh shit. Like yeah. I am really like FOMO for everybody around the world. People like Brits were like, Oh my gosh, I wish I was there. You know, Aussies, I wish I was there. Even some you know, people here in the US are like, Oh my God, like how fun would it be to be there right now? And people are like, we missed out. Do you think that that, car- that carries over and that'll, that'll force more people next year? Yeah. Big time. 
Uh, 1000%. Like I knew it would be cool, but when I started seeing like videos of the fan days and the strip and like I was just, like I said, my WhatsApp feed, my Instagram feed, my TikTok feed, I was just like fucking people in Vegas. And I'm like, man, this is, Everybody this is like, <laughs> dude, it was like, you sort of, it's sort of a similar vibe to Magic Round in Brisbane, but like just yeah. bigger and better. Like, my, like, like def like definitely bigger and better um the the media hype was very real like rugby league media was like all about it um we had like very high ratings both both matches were rated very highly on nine fox ko yeah um and there was a lot of talk about it and it helps that i'm pretty sure the nrl flew across a bunch of media so they're obviously going to say nice things about the event when <laughs> they're flying first class thanks to the nrl but everyone Funny, I came the, i didn't get that uh well first class invitation. <laughs> you should you should get it next time and to be honest you should be on the commentary team next time as well oh, on, on nine and fox 100 percent. we need an american accent there but that's another side comment but the the hype was real everyone was talking about it it was it was it wasn't back page newspaper it was front page newspaper like yeah. it was the biggest thing going on that week um in sydney anyway probably in brisbane as well um and i think rugby league fans for the first time like we had something that we could all be happy and proud about together whereas obviously rugby league fans always like fight about stuff but we we're all happy and proud about something it was amazing um fans of other sports were kind of like dude like you know, I kind AFL of like, can't believe like, you. Oh, God, like, a lot of AFL fans that I spoke to, and I don't speak to a lot, but it was kind of like, man, I can't believe you assholes pulled that off. Right. You know, like it was, it was a bit like that. And um, the AFL on the same week that just passed, they they, they, did, they, yeah. they had an opening round in like Sydney and Brisbane, and it was like, not there was just not the hype. You know, there was not the hype that should have been there. Too, wasn't there? Like, I, think, I thought I read somewhere it's like lower than expected fan turnout. It was lower than expected, but look, to be like, let's right. not shit on the AFL's right, like they... numbers through the gates because they shit all over any other sport in Australia when it comes to bums on seats. Um, but in terms of ratings and in terms of like, it was like, it was not as big. And, and it's how can it be? Like, what's bigger than like opening round in Vegas? Like, that's pretty sensational. Um, and, and but to be honest, apart from you know, you've got AFL opening week. Uh, AFL opening week was like probably second in terms of sport news. NRL opening week was a resounding first. Yeah, and there was just nothing else in sport. There was nothing else in sport here. Um, so it was pretty phenomenal, man. It was a good vibe. Um, we did we did hear about you know the the Americans that were over there. Um, we saw the low viewing numbers. What was it, sixty six thousand? But I like I don't even know if that's Here, here's 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 what I'll do. Right, so tell me. I, the, so we'll, I'll do a quick comparison because is it low numbers? Sure. Is it Fox Sport? It, but it's on Fox Sports One, so it's not the main Fox channel. It's not technically free. It is pretty much in every basic cable package um, that that's offered in around the country. Um, so I think from that standpoint. You know, when people are like, oh, the numbers were low. It was, it, it followed a basketball game, which is, you know, we're March Madness for basketball here in the U.S. now. So this is like crunch time for everybody before we go play in the big tournament, which is, um, you know, kind of a, you know, yeah, it's just, it's just a bit, it's just a big time of the year. So these are like pivotal matches to decide who's going to get in or who's going to play in their conference championships and things like that. So it's, it's very important. So that's like, well, the match before had so many, you know, went into overtime and it missed part of the match. Yeah, that's true. So that that's kind of, that kind of hurts that we didn't pull some of those people in from that first match, the from on the first match. But in the grand scheme of things, for not advertising, for not doing much of anything, for it being a nine thirty East Coast game, right? So you know, it was this was West Co this is a West Coast time zone, so three hours ahead. It was a nine thirty East Coast game. The second game was an eleven thirty. Like, mm. like your people were in bed. Um, but yeah, that's you know. That's, so I didn't expect the you know high numbers. I, if I, if we can, okay. Oh, I I don't think it was even like American viewing figures was a consideration for no. the NRL. No, that doesn't mean it. That doesn't mean it shouldn't be. Like no. moving forward, it should be. 
But right. this time around, it certainly wasn't. So I don't know what people were expecting, but right. like, I, just, I, I, I didn't know. expect a whole lot. I, my parents watched it, which I thought was funny. Well, that's but, good. That's two people. My, my, yeah, my, my parents were watching. Of course, they watched. They streamed all of the nights. My dad said we left the stream open all day long on the television. <laughs> that's great. I was that's like, oh best. god, like, thanks, dad. So, uh, but yeah, it was. I mean, but he said, "Mom is hooked on this right now," and I'm like, "Oh shit, that's mad. <laughs> like, mom, mom's a new I fan love of that. rugby league." Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's an interesting. You know, when you talk about like viewing numbers and stuff, like again, I didn't expect a whole lot like i didn't expect that you know but when you get into it you know next year could be bigger uh should should be bigger yeah viewing numbers weren't considered i don't like when you look at it you know it was the experience in stadium that i think was the main draw for people you know they sh- would it be great to be on regular free to air fox absolutely i mean there was nothing on at that particular time i don't know why they couldn't have worked it out now they are on fox sports one great that, that's so they get a couple match extra matches a week on the main channel. It was the highest rated NRL event on American television history. Ever, yeah. It's not saying a whole lot because so, you know, it's it's usually but, on but, Fox Sports Plus. But in comparison, it was also the opening weekend of Major League Rugby Union in the US and LA Sevens at the same exact time. Now, if we look, if we want to really compare stuff there, LA Sevens was not even, did not even get categorized because it was only streamed on uh, Peacock, which is a, a you know, a, I don't know. If it's it's like an NBC it's, streaming yeah, it's, yeah, sort it's of thing. NBC yeah. streaming service. It was only streamed on Peacock. And in the stadium, I talked to people who were there the first day, you know, they had crappy weather. And so there wasn't, not a lot of people showed up. The second day was beautiful and sunny and championship day. Somebody said, there's no way there were more than 3000 people there. Like at LA Sevens, like which is supposed to be this huge event because it used to be Vegas. Yeah, I sevens. thought. Yeah. Okay. Right. So it used to be massive. You can go look at the photos from the stands. It was abysmal. And then when you compare it to the ratings or what you would get from Major League Rugby, you know, uh, you know, it's funny when people like compare things because somebody was like, "Well, NRL got sixty thousand, and the rugby league and the rugby union World Cup final got two five hundred fifty three. Yeah. I was like, "What, is, what the fuck kind of like, comparison so, is that? What, what do you mean?" They're like, well, in Major League Rugby, they're like Major League Rugby had 200,000 viewers in their final last year. I was like, Major League Rugby has been around for almost seven years now, right? Seven years to get a stronghold, and their viewership has dropped off by 30% at minimum every single year since its inception. The second year, you had 500,000 people watch the Major League Rugby final. Last year, their viewing numbers were 243,000. They've dropped yeah. Look, drastically. I think that so comparing it's a it better, is terrible. <laughs> that's it's a better comparison though. And look, right. I don't want to I don't want to celebrate rugby major league rugby viewership going down because those are the people we want well, watching we rugby league those, as well. So, right there. Yeah, yeah. So I don't I don't want to celebrate that, but you know it is a better comparison, man. Like I, like if anyone was I, I don't whatever that number was, I think people would have shit canned it over here. So that like if you can always find something to I just to bag that. out, right? If if you have that, yeah. It's nothing better. And so yeah, I, I think I joked on social media about the whole comparing it to the World Cup final. And I said, well how many of those were expats? <laughs> Dude. I like insane. not just ex, not just expats, but like expats from every country that plays rugby union and like give me a break. Like five hundred thousand, like great. You had five hundred thousand people watch the like the final which the final like not, not just a regular uh, an opening round match like you like, uh, it's just people are dumb like they want to compare stuff like that i'm like oh whatever like it's the the joys of, of doing what we do is what it is man people would have found something you know and look, at, over overall was a success if there, if there was a, a if there was success. a sellout and we had two million people be like well it didn't compare to the nba I'm like, I'm like yeah. What? oh yeah man but the the NFL had you know, yeah, right. 99 of the top 100 shows. What are you doing? Like, yeah, right. Yeah, anyway. oh, give me a break. Uh, it's, what, what, what I can tell you, you know, you, we talked about it earlier. I wanted to go back real quick is I, when I walked around the concourse and it was so, it was so cool to see Eels jerseys, to see, you know, see Dragons jerseys, to see, you know, um, everybody. Like, you know, Hall KR. I mean, there were tons of Hall KR jerseys there, which I thought was That's crazy. Oh, yeah. Like and that was the funny thing. It's like it was everybody. Everybody had their kits on. It was great. But then you had Las Vegas Knights. You had 49ers jerseys. I saw some LA Rams yeah, jerseys. That's cool. Uh, you know, I saw some I, everything. I was like, okay, 
I see you. They, they, there's my Americans. Like there's there's that's the, actually there's good. The yeah, like, that. that's how you can tell where they're from. You know, oh, absolutely. This, yeah, that's they're great. Like, we're gonna go to the sporting event. We have no idea what it's about, but we're gonna wear the team that we support. They're like yeah, Detroit. There's a Detroit Lions a woman wearing a Detroit Lions jersey, and I went. You're a bit far from home, ma'am. <laughs> she said, oh, it seemed like fun to be here. I'm like, yeah, fair enough. Like, you're just a sports fan. Like, because Americans are just sports fans. Like, th- yeah. like they follow. It's, it's not, maybe it's not quite as, you know, there's not quite as back and forth like AFL and rugby league and, and, and union, you know. Um, I don't know how much netball gets, you know, gets the bash heads in there or anything. But, uh, you know, or, or, you know, the ba- professional basketball down there. But here, I mean, fans of a sport will follow or fans from a city so if we'll just use like cleveland for example that's where my family's from they will follow baseball basketball football so like they will follow every single team like die hard passion like die hard passion you know if you're a dallas cowboys fan you're a texas rangers fan you're you know you're a dallas mavericks fan all three major sports you're a fan of each one of those teams in that sport like americans will find a way to go after a sport if they really like it if they can find a way to connect with the team from a locality you know if you have uh you know if if brisbane ends up wanting to partner with the denver broncos you would have denver broncos fans now become brisbane bronco fans yeah and that's that's why like we don't we don't get that right people over here say oh you're never going to beat the nfl over there and it's like look we're not trying to, and we'd be fucking stupid if we did. No one in but the world can beat the NFL, yeah. by the way. No, no, no one can, and but we don't have to. We just, like you said, Denver Bronco f- fans will go for the Brisbane Broncos, and Dallas Cowboys fans will go for the North Queensland Cowboys. Right. We just need a Dragons team in the NFL. That's fine. We'll figure that out. An Eels team in the NFL. We're gonna, we'll figure that out. But man, we we don't get that over here because for us it's like oh no what you you support rugby league oh you support AFL oh you support union like it's we we're not allowed to like each other for some reason it's yeah. ridiculous but it's fascinating. but um you you see some crossover in some sports like I see a lot of um like uh, Parramatta Eels fans that also go for the Western Sydney Wanderers in the A League yeah. like soccer our soccer league yeah. so you might see a little bit of stuff like that but. It's very rare, man. Very rare. Yeah, we're we're we're, we're crazy. Well, I don't know how long you want to talk because it's late for you. It's early for me, but I feel like we could do this for another three hours. <laughs> I, I, also, I just I also want to be cognizant of like who's listening and how long they're listening. <laughs> I just looked up at the the little time, the recording time, and it's almost an hour. So I'm like, holy shit, have we really done that? But I, it, I think it's um, gone by like this, man. Look, I'm happy to to end it whenever you like, but um, I think one thing is for sure, we probably got to do this a little bit more often. You know, a little yeah. bit of a, you know, RLA slash chasing kangaroos crossover, ch- ch- chasing and, rugby league in America, rugby league in <laughs> r- r- chasing rug, r- chasing ch- hawks, chasing something. <laughs> well, well, we'll work on that as two. Uh, we'll figure as, it out as, as an early morning and a late night marketing mind come together. It's not always the best thing. <laughs> Uh, we'll figure it out, man. But hey, when when you want to like, I, I even thinking like when you want to talk about like news from from the board and stuff like that, and you need someone to sort of ask you the questions, then right, I'm happy man. to come back and and join you for those yeah. those convos and hear it firsthand, man. That'd and, be and, mad. and from a, like a news from the board type of thing, I we, we do. I think there is a desire for us from a board of director standpoint, and this is like completely not related to the to the NRL right now, but. Um, to do something like with the PCO, like town hall, like let's talk about what, you know, what's on people's mind. Let's, you know, we want to make sure we get our minutes and things out to everybody so that people know, you know, at least like a recap, like here's what we discussed with the board of directors this week, you know, this month, you know, when, when we all met, here's what we're working on here, you know, is, you know, as high level as possible because you want to give that to people so that they understand. So we want to do that we'll see how that works out maybe maybe you can come on and ask questions or whatever 100 percent, man happy to do that man and that's what it's important the pcrl were the first to do it and they are it's a great idea the guys man ad and ben and the guys behind pcrl have a lot to do with all of like everyone sort of coming together now as a sport over there what they've done at pcrl is amazing and i just i've told them personally and i'll i'll tell them publicly here as well but the fact that those town halls, they're prepared to, if something goes wrong, they'll just own it and say, look, this went wrong and we'll do it better next time and this is what yeah. we're planning and et cetera, et cetera. Whereas in the past, it's been like, oh, no, we can't 
talk about what we did wrong and it's a secret and no one knows what the hell's happening and it's it's just not the way to be and um i just i love the way pcrl have done it they've brought utah in as well i mean they're essentially the biggest part of usarl now you know when you you think about the pcr has a substantial number of teams they just and they did it from just humble hard work and honesty and i I fucking love that they've done that man it's it's been fantastic to watch from afar yeah well that's a good place good place to end it as we tick on to the hour yeah yeah it's this has been this is awesome man it's actually kind of funny so (laughs) little little in fact that carbs and i did record one time before (laughs) he thought thought i was gonna let go and and he mysteriously lost the recording this was back in in the early days of the narl when i started talking about rugby league down in austin and and we recorded and it was like six o'clock in the morning my time i remember that so uh it was it was fun uh the lost episode we'll call it (laughs) i wish i had the footage because i'm sure it was a wonderful conversation and i know you keep hinting that i like like i've still got it somewhere and i just i didn't want to release it but that's it's definitely not the case but that was the first time it was the first time we spoke and back then you were a rugby union podcaster, not a rugby league podcaster, you know, but like, I didn't hold that against you. We had a chat. Maybe that's why I lost the footage, by the way, no, but, 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 but seriously. And since then, obviously, like I said, you've, you've held the chasing kangaroos network together while I've been away. And I'm, I'm just so glad that you've been able to help us, man. I know when, um, I mean, I, 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 we, we, I'm glad you're we've back. Met, well, I'm I'm glad to be back too. Because that, that allows mentioned... me to announce that I am stepping. <laughs> no, we need to, that means we need to get Nate Nate Gladden back out of hiding. He needs to come back as well. I, but I, but when when Nate sort of stood aside and stopped doing this, like I just I, I reached out to him and I said, "Man, we got to keep this rugby league in America brand alive because you're the reason why you really helped me get started." You know, and he said, "Yeah, but how are we going to do it?" And I'm like, "Well." I know a guy that I know, I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> and um and here you are, man, and you've really Very mafioso Don Carboni style. That's right? why. <laughs> that's how it, that's, hey, that's, I that's know a guy. <laughs> I, I bring people together. I bring people together. But man, you you've you smashed it and I hope you just keep going, man, because um people love love hearing it and, and I, I'm certainly one of your biggest fans every well, week. I pre- I appreciate that. We'll keep we'll keep going as long as uh, my wife allows me to <laughs> love it <laughs> which which could be you know who knows we'll see uh no i think obviously you know with with everything that that we've been working on you know it, you know like it's hard like i i, I mean i know like I, listen i can't do everything you know everybody's like oh when's the magazine coming out again i'm like oh yeah that too like oh the website oh shit that too like oh like all this other stuff you're like oh yeah i gotta get more and more and more involved and so it's like uh so I, I Don't under, complain. I, you started all of I those know. things. I know. So. I set a really <laughs> high standard for myself. Like social media posts. Uh, I will say, like at date of this recording, there will be the final on the what if jersey. Like because we had Vegas, and then I was just so tired after Vegas. I needed to step back a little bit. But the the what if final on who's going to be the kit that won? Like because I designed all the kits and stuff too. I'm like, yeah, I got to do that too. So everybody's like, who who's going to win? I was like, well, we'll see this week. So that's coming out today. So. Don't forget. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Mate, awesome. So good to so good to sit down to talk rugby league with you, man. Like I, honestly, like you know, we, we we we'll give each other calls. Like we also talked about doing I don't know if you remember like the, we were both driving to work or doing something. Oh yeah, the driving before. episodes. Yeah, d- 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 dr- yeah, in in the car with carbs and dust. <laughs> or it would never like, it would never work. There'd be no. too much noise, but you know, yeah. it, it's good to good to dream. Yeah, drive time is is what I was like, oh, we've got drive time. <laughs> like and then I realized there's actually drive time on like over in the UK. It's a sports show like on Talk Sports. Oh, yeah. Like I was like, oh, that's well, that makes sense yeah. of course i wasn't the first to think of that <laughs> so. Wait, it's all everything's been thought of before don't worry well uh, uh I, i'll i'll let you uh close uh and, and and you're closing and then i'll close in mine and then we'll we'll call it we'll call it a show like i said it's been a pleasure speaking to the ray warren of rugby league in america <laughs> so dustin thank you for chasing kangaroos with me and for Mr. Don Carboni, who is back on the airwaves, it's an absolute pleasure to finally sit down and record an episode with him where you all can enjoy us. Don't forget to follow everybody, Chasing Kangaroos and Rugby League in America, on social medias. And until next time, my name is Justin Zare. This has been 
Rugby League in America.